So hello and um, welcome to my talk about the undergoing rewrite of the storage stack for YAST. We call the storage NG, next generation. And before I explain the new generation, I have to explain some of the mistakes in the old generation. So the old world, um, you will see a bit of these um, diagrams today. Uh, I hope you can see this. So we have a disk here, and the disk can have a few partitions. And we have information about the file system as, as part of the um, partitions. That looks so far fine, but already this has um, two major problems. One is you cannot have a file system directly on the disk. Um, you would have to have this file system structure also here. Another problem is ButterFS with multiple devices. It, it also doesn't fit here. And then one use case I will show in all of these graphs is that um, Suppose you want to know whether a file system is on a USB stick in, in case you then want to set other FS type options like no fail. This is here still simple. You take the file system or the object with the partition. You take the back reference and then ask the disk if it's a USB disk. So already two problems. Um, then we have logical volumes or LVM. It looks the same. We have a volume group, and this this again can have several sub devices, which are the logical volumes. This is completely analog to the disk and partition setup. The file system is also in the logical volume. When you combine these two, um, you need a new connection type from the partition to the volume group. And this is an, another mechanism than the connection from the disks to the partitions or from the volume group to the logical volume. So now when you want to, for example, see this first dev system root file system, whether it's on a USB stick, you have to first follow to the volume group using one mechanism, then ask the volume group about its physical volumes, go find the partition and then take the link to the disk. So you have two, two, um, two methods you have to use here. And it gets worse when it comes to rates. So with rate, initially 10 years ago, you had a rate and directly a file system on it or a logical volume. But uh, five years ago, you, the kernel got support to partition rates. So this also didn't fit here because again, on, a, on one of these disks or volume groups, you don't have the file system information. So in the old world, there is a pseudo container, which then holds the um, unpartitioned or the, the unpartitioned rates. And we have another set of um, rate classes for partitioned rates. And here they are like the uh, disks, they have sub-devices. And so now when you have to want to know the file system, this first one, X4, whether it's on a USB stick, you don't have to find the parent this pseudo MD, but you have to ask the rate which device it is it has. So then you have three ways um, you have to query when you want to know whether a file system is on a USB stick. And this makes these compli uh, traveling the graph or this um, structure very complicated. These function that, for example, when you delete a partition and you want to know all the devices that are below this partition, like all rates, all LVMs, all loops encryption, all file systems, these functions are a few hundred lines long and very complicated because every type has to be handled separately. 
And yeah, then um, to summarize the um, problems you see by looking at these layouts, um, presentation of file system directly on disk is not possible. We have two classes for uh, um, MD rates. Presentation of ButterFS is not with multiple devices is not comp uh, possible, and it's complicated to travel this uh, traverse this layout. Um, these are the ones you could see on this layout. There are a few more, like this. We cannot completely save a layout of this on disk. It's just implemented for some of the types. And when we export this from C++ to Ruby, it's all e exported in one huge data blob, which is a list of maps and lists and maps and so on and so on. And it's, nobody actually knows any longer what these data include, which is also another problem that this data cannot come only comes from this library, but also from Harvey Info and other sources, and they are intermingled into this great map. And yeah, and then some function add another key to this map, and some function need this key, and very complicated. And another problem is also the bindings we have. They are partly generated by Swig, but our callbacks are um, handmade for whatever reason. So then uh, about two and a half years ago, the YAS team said, we want to get rid of this target map. It's terrible, undocumented. We don't understand it any longer. And then during one hack week, I came up with a new idea. So this is the new layout. And the basic idea is we place all the devices just in a standard graph, which which um, where when you look at these pictures, you immediately, immediately should think, yes, this is a graph. Maybe it's just a tree, but in some cases, it, it's also a graph. And there's only one type of connections in the graph, from nodes to the their edges, and whether it, you have a file system underneath an RAID or on a disk directly, it doesn't matter. And we use this C++ boost graph library, and for example, finding um, the file system or finding the disk of a file system is a standard uh, breadth first search, which the library provides its five lines of code and not a few hundred. So now we'll I show you some, um, yeah. There's a few graphs um, of the equivalent of the um, um, layouts you had just uh, uh, a minute ago. So here we have a disk and we have an extra object for a partition table, an MS-DOS in this case, two partitions, file system, and swap, uh, and mount point. As you see, this uh, file system is a separate object, so we can connect it to any block device. It's, whether it's a disk, whether it's a logical volume, a Lux encrypted device, or a RAID, it doesn't matter. It's always the same. So it can get even simpler here. Maybe the most simple use case, you have a disk, a file system, and a mount point. And it's, yeah, the file system type is this or class is exactly the same as in the, in the previous example. So here's now the um, the RAID setup. As you can see, two um, disk two disks can combine can be combined to a RAID and then a file system on it, or you can combine yeah, also two disks and then have a partition table with partitions and file system and. There's only one class for rates now, so that saves maybe 1,000 lines of codes. And this also shows why this needs to be a graph, because as you can see one child or one node, the yellow one here, the rate, can have several parents, which is the case for RAID, LVM, and someday also ButterFS, and then multipass, of course, also. Now I have another example. 
a bit more complicated with Lux and LVM. So we have two disks, GPT partition table, pa some partitions, a Lux encrypted device is this purple in the middle, and then a volume group behind that. And whether you place this encrypted, this Lux, you can place it behind the partition, or you could place it behind the logical volume. From the graph structure, it doesn't matter. It's always the same classes. You use the same algorithms to to find the parents, the children, whatever. It's always the same. So, um, but a device graph won't install your system. <laughs> you have to um, also think what what do I have to do when I install a system? And here we use a um, very generic approach. We have two device graphs. One is the one that was probed during startup of the Yast um, system. And then Yast modifies it either via the proposal or via the expert partition or, or both, it doesn't matter. Then we have a big function which compares these device graphs and generates an action graph. We call it action graph because it consists of, well, maybe one action, but more likely a few hundred. And this action define then what has to be done. And here's a rather simple one. So the first action is create a MS-DOS partition table. Then underneath this are three creating three partitions. These have to be created in order. First, the partition one, two, three. That's actually a limitation of parted because when you create a partition with parted, you cannot say which number it should have. You just say create one and it picks the next three number. So this graph heavily depends on the tools you use. With FDisk, this ordering would not be required. And then after you've created partitions, you can create a file system, mount the file system, and add the mount file, uh, add the mount point to FSTub. But of course, before, see, before you add it to FSTub during installation, you have to add, mount your root file system. That's, that's this, um, um, this arrow from the middle above the purple one to the one on the left. This is a very simple graph, so only three partitions with my with file system involved. Unfortunately, it gets com complicated. This is the standard setup when you add um, ButterFS subvolumes, because we create about 20 of those and they have to be created, mounted, and all added to FSTub. You know, that's why this huge, um, yeah, whatever you call it, <laughs> this, I wouldn't call it mess, <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, it gets very complicated, and this is still just one one disk, no no RAID setup, no Lux encrypted. You can have device uh, action graphs with yeah three four hundred actions, and we are also not deleting anything. If you delete something, you maybe has have one hundred more or something like that. And yeah, one note maybe. Um, then just takes this action graph, does a topologic sort, and then it has one ordering that works. The order is not completely defined. Often you could interchange some actions, but it doesn't matter. And the aim is not to um, parallelize this. This could maybe added, be added uh, later. You, you would, with some extra effort, you could also parallelize this. So what new features, because users are care about features. So obviously a file system directly on disk that already works. And actually people want that they, when you have your a file system directly on a disk and this disk comes from a storage attached network, you can resize the disk while your system is running. So you can increase the disk and if you have a file system on the disk directly you can just say resize the file system and you are done. If you have a partition first you have to resize the partition. Oh this doesn't work when the partition is mounted so you have to shut down your service and that's very bad. I mean with newer parts this will also work but still without a partition table it's easier. 
we have only one rate class for uh, only one class for rates that will for example allow that you can create a rate and then immediately say that you want to partition it which is not possible in the old classes and there it's during startup decided whether a rate is partitioned or unpartitioned and you cannot change it at runtime we will have butterf as multiple device support we will have full control over, over butterf sub volumes so you can this is currently very limited in the old class it's just a list of the sub volumes but yeah very bad you cannot assign especially a bound point to a sub volume it's yeah very limited now it's all possible we have already support for bcache at least partly it, we can probe it and you can already use it so when you have a bcache setup you can already use it for creating a file system on it and we will get a root file system encryption which is also requested right quite often a few more internal new features is that the devices now are directly exported to the ruby from c++ via swig bindings they are all generated automatically the callbacks also are generated automatically so there's no handmade stuff here and this makes programming in ruby i think far easier than with dealing with this target map and this library itself um, has far more unit tests we have unit tests for probing where we um where we just mock the external commands we run because someday i realized basically all information we get from the system is gathered we are running external commands let's say whether it's part at um, or lvm tools or md rate you basically always run external commands or look at some files in sys or proc and by mocking those we can we can test the um the probing which was also not possible in the old library and we have unit tests for the action graph generation so that we see that um not, no action is um, lost or dependency is missing or something like that and we have integration tests with binding uh, with pythons python and another feature is we have remote probing since all information is gathered via external commands you can just um, use ssh to log into another machine and then get the information from there another feature um, is that the well we, we write basically most of the storage stack in just new which is also is the proposal which is currently make maybe the least maintainable <laughs> code in this area and the new one will uh, give you further options to influence the proposal like you can select um if there is in windows should it be kept or should it be removed and if you have an other linux system should it would you prefer to keep it or would you prefer to delete it or replace it yes okay then some references for those who would like to get more into this project the first ones are the git repos of the main project that is the lib storage ng the just storage ng and the just partitioner this just partitioner will be the expert partition it's now a separate um, package and the last one is the um from the build service where we build the packages and we also build an iso which already works it can install a system with yeah with um, normal partitions lvm lux encryption i think that's about it and for example you can already install with uh, full uh, with encrypted root partition it just doesn't boot <laughs> i've informed the grub2 maintainer about this so um, but yeah we still have some time um, for this to get um, ready um, yeah about the timeline we aim for slash 15 so in a few months this should be in tumbleweed 
So that that's it. Any questions? Yes, Mr. Neukum. The question is whether we can deal with more non-volatile memory disks uh, or DIMMs. Uh, not yet. We have feature requests for this. We will likely have to look at it. Yes. Other questions? No, then thanks for coming.